my movie recollection uh anniversary of tombstone edition or anniversary edition uh of tombstone actually what was the other name matt i forgot you you came up with it it was renewing our movie vows that's the name of the podcast right right that's awesome um and i and i was i was thinking we should do that but at the same time i got other movies from like not from 10 years ago in different years that i really would like to talk about so well, that's save, why save them for those decade anniversaries then. <laughs> you could do that i think renewing our movie vows i think fits anything it doesn't have to be an anniversary um it's just revisiting Ooh. a movie i mean it can fit anything all right yeah that's yeah that works works a lot but um this episode though uh we're gonna travel back through time to 1993 um on December 25th, uh, something happened uh, in history, and that was Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it theaters. does feel like a classic Christmas release. I had no idea it came out at Christmas. That's me, neat. me either. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, so that's pretty risky. I mean, it is a very good film. It's not too, is it too violent? I don't know. I wouldn't say it's too violent, but for the nineties, yeah, it was. uh, This was like a pre-Quentin Tarantino era. I think um, a guy like Quentin Tarantino like ramped up the violence, but no, there was a lot. I mean, there's like, you know, you got Goodfellas and stuff like that that's out there. I mean, there's there's plenty of mainstream violence going on in the early nineties. Um. Okay. Well, the ending it ends very Christmassy, doesn't it? Where they're like dancing in the snow. So maybe <laughs> that's why. Should we just jump right to the end right away? Cause that, <laughs> that was a huge, I, like that, the, the tone of the ending scene just, just didn't sit right with me at all. I, and that's been our podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Bye everybody. <laughs> yeah. Did, did, I mean, did it, did it strike you guys as odd? Um, yeah. I kind of, yeah, I just kind of zoned out by that point. Kind oh, of like, oh, what do you mean? Well, like, you know, it ended and then they had that little little, little capper at the end. I was like, ah, I didn't need that. So you just started zoning out during that last scene. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's like, so the scene before that, immediately before that is Doc dying, right? And then yeah, it goes, that was devastating. Yeah. <laughs> so and I was he... done at that point, yeah. <laughs> Should they have ended uh, it with him dying like that? No, looking at, shouldn't his, have. Looking at just... his feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that that should have been the end. I just like, like you guys thought the actual end was kind of off. Maybe it was just the music choice, and there was sort of a was there sort of a slow mo thing going on. I kind I kind of forget if there's a slow mo thing, but I think it was just kind of a music choice. It was like this cheerful kind of thing that didn't fit the rest of the movie. Yeah, and I didn't mind that he's he's like, hey, I, I've got nothing, and you know we're together now and stuff. So maybe it was. Uh, did they have to dance? Did they have to dance? No. That was the first thing, though, that he she wanted to do with him, and he and he said no. He stood there. You're right. He, I, I he ignored her, like he said he would. The That's ultimate right. neg. Is that what that is? I feel like I do that a lot to to girls to get attention. Where they're like, <laughs> well, I don't get it. I'm super hot. Guys are usually like all over me. I don't get it. <laughs> so I I neg. Okay, interesting. All right. Well, represent. I mean, it's it's the most um like passive of nagging possible, but <laughs> I like that. I don't mind that. I'm gonna look this up. <laughs> do I, do I really fall into that category? All right, but uh, let's. Well, we usually start off chronologically, and we could do that, but we could also jump right ahead and and stuff um, as soon as the character's brought up. We could even go right to its death because a lot of people die in this movie. Uh, but let's go into the very beginning, the black and white intro, where it's like. Like a really, it's like a uh, filmed on that grainy, yeah, yeah that size cool. of a postage stamp. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but then it cuts to that wide, 
shot, beautiful shot. I, I really like how this is filmed. Really good. Um, and that's the introduction of the Cowboys, where the, the it's like they were the earliest form of organized crime in the U.S. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And I also really enjoyed the fact that they wore a red sash. So me as a viewer, I could um, identify them as the bad guy at all times. Agreed. It's like watching... Like, um, like I had a lot of trouble the first time I watched this um, recognizing who was who. Like, I'm not great at, like, recognizing oh. people's faces and like everyone is just like oh it's like an old white mustache man and you know at least the the sashes let me know who the cowboys were and it took me a while to get used to all the faces of everybody else we get it john <laughs> all white people look the same <laughs> i i actually really enjoyed the costume because they are colorful like curly bill's big red shirt just to let us know, hey, that's the leader of the guys who wear red. <laughs> you know? Actually, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but like, I like the blues and there's like purples and stuff. It's one of the things I usually hate about Westerns is just how dull and like brown everyone looks and stuff. Um, dusty. Obviously Westerns not. There's some, dusty. Yes, dusty. And there's some dust. There's some shit on the ground and stuff, but... Uh, Tombstone's trying to be cosmopolitan, right? As that mayor said, or the yeah, uh, yeah, I was gonna call out a couple of those things. So, like, what, one of the things I loved was like, oh yeah, we're gonna start out this great new calm life. It'll be great. It's in a place called Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, like when the mayor says how oh, like, yeah, we'll be uh, big as San Francisco in a few years and. You know, just as cosmopolitan or whatever, and then um, immediately, like people are just shot in the street. It was pretty great. Oh, I, um, I, my, my bad here. It's the county sheriff, oh, okay. Bayhan, who. I'll just say this: this is an awesome ensemble. Everyone, like I, I, I understand if like it's kind of confusing because people pop in and out, but. I think like that Bayhan character, he's he's he is really kind of useless. You know, he's handsome and charming, but he's just selling you a line of bullshit all the time, right? And just mm -hmm. that little role like is is nice. I don't even think he gets a conclusion or whatever. Well, I don't think he gets any sort of arc at all. I think that was one of one of my uh I mean, I don't have a whole lot of problems with this movie, but that was one of my minor things. Like I didn't understand all of a sudden he kind of turns and there's even a scene where he's helping the cowboys or i forget exactly what was going on or he's hanging out with the cowboys so i didn't understand exactly where any of that was coming from it seemed yeah, like he was on the it good definitely side of seemed the like he was like in league with them to some degree or at least at the very least willing to look the other way that's right yeah he's gonna i have a few things um because I've, I've watched this a lot um but as soon as I had to take notes, I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't realize he said that. Like, I watched it with subtitles. I'm like, oh, okay. So, yeah, he he's definitely more in on what's going on. He definitely not only looks away, but he seems to know uh, because he tells Josie, he's like, yeah, people show up and they think they're going to run this town, but then they don't know what the real play is. And apparently that's like cloaked people just fucking assassinating all lawmen except for him. Oh. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I picked up on all that. This yeah, the, I definitely did not pick up on that one. So the second time I've seen this. So would you say how many times do you think you've seen this, Vince? If you could ballpark it, dozens or really a, pretty darn close to dozens. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I like this movie a lot when I was when I was a kid, uh, but I haven't seen it for a while. And so this was nice going back. Hmm. Yeah. So I watched it once years ago. And then I watched it when we first said we were going to cover it. And then <laughs> How many years four ago months was that? later, <laughs> when we said we were going to actually cover it, then I watched it again. <laughs> so you, you watched it twice in the past month or so then? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Cool. Cool, cool. And oh. the second time I watched it again, like yeah, I definitely got more out of it because I was able to better recognize everybody. Are 
Westerns uh, favorites of your guys' at all? I don't um, think so. I don't seek them out, but, you know, it's like um, if someone says, like, oh, this is a good movie and it's also a Western, like, I'll look forward to watching it, I guess. Yeah, I've never been a big Western fan. And obviously Westerns were a gigantic thing once upon a time. 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, Westerns were were their own genre unto themselves. And there was multiple that came out every year. But no, I'm I'm not a Western fan. I do, a lot of Westerns just come off as really dusty and kind of dull to me. But, um, you know, I'm a big fan of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, I mean, it's, I got a strange thing with movies. Like some movies, they're slow, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. But they really draw you in somehow. Whereas other movies, they're just slow, but there's no magic. There's no tempo. There's nothing going on to draw me in. I'm mean, sometimes it's a really fine line, but um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, hateful eight, bone Tom bone tomahawk came out a few years ago. Uh, I'm just trying to think of some of my favorite westerns. That's like all Kurt Russell there, dude. Yeah, yeah, Good it is. Shit. It's strange, isn't it? Oh. Um, okay, well, let's uh, get to the our first introduction of the cowboys because that's when they bust in through that wedding and shoot the guy because he killed two cowboys. Uh, uh, so we get that introduction where, like, they're all shooting up, you know, people are getting shoot up. Meanwhile, Ringo, uh, Johnny Ringo, is kind of in the back. He's he's not shooting at all. He's just kind of, like, uh, taking in the, the violence and the, the, the gore and shit. And, you know, afterwards, the priest is, like, cursing at him and stuff. And he just, he finally takes a shot and he just kills the priest dead right away. And he's like, you know. He was quoting the Bible. He was saying, like, you know, the pale horse, the death fall with him. There's this glee. There's this glint in his eye when he's saying it. And I got to say, uh, Michael Bean is the guy who plays Johnny Ringo. And this is his best role. I, he, I don't think he's ever played a bad guy before or since. And he's, I think he's really effective. He's so weird and creepy. He's good. And Powers Booth is good. Um, I, I don't know this Michael Bean guy. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Bean? I, believe I, so, I don't yeah. I don't know him from anything else, although he's definitely a that guy. He's got that face where I know I've seen him in multiple things, but I can't pick him Yeah, he else. was a he was a big James Cameron guy. So he was in like uh Terminator, Aliens, The Abyss. Um and you know, not necessarily the lead in all of those, but you know, um a one of the main roles. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, there's so much love. We'll talk about that later. About you know Val Kilmer and stuff. But like this was uh, Johnny Ringo was a a nice little menace, and uh, of course Ike. Ike, I believe everyone loves to hate. I don't know which one's Ike. I'm kind of drawing a. Blank, he's you know. the guy who's constantly saying like we're gonna kill you and then as soon as they pull a gun on him he's like oh my god i give up <laughs> <Please."> okay, okay. <laughs> oh yeah the was he the one who was like uh had taken over the the first casino and he was sitting at the the table there running running it, it? that was that, billy bob thornton that, that was wasn't billy a <laughs> that wasn't a cowboy no uh oh you're okay you're talking about one of the cowboys never mind okay. right well, we'll get to him when we get to him. He doesn't really have a scene here uh, showcasing uh, greatness. A lot of people really don't. It's it, it it is a cool ensemble cast, but then I feel like I want to see more out of a whole bunch of people. Like like it's really strange how Michael Rooker ha he's he's one of the cowboys, and then all of a sudden he flips halfway through the movie and he says, "Him and I think three other guys, three other cowboys." They say we don't appreciate shooting up your women or whatever he says and then he throws his sash down and then they ride off but i think maybe that's the only piece of dialogue he gets in the entire movie and where that turn comes from who the hell knows i feel like there's missing michael rooker scenes in this you know right uh the only indication is in this first scene of him being different sure he's shooting up uh the guys but then when they take the 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 bride into fucking raper that's when he kind of looks down and he's not very proud of it. And you'll actually uh, see in the scene where like Ringo, Johnny Ringo's saying, you know, the, the biblical thing, M Michael uh, Rooker or 
yeah. He's just kind of staring at Power's booth as if like, do I even want to do do this anymore? And you know, like all the shit. It's kind of cool. I, I I like this. It's a very. I think you get way more watching it more than once. You know, it's because it's so jam packed with actors doing their own thing on camera. It's just there's like fifty people in the movie. You know. Um, I. I, you know, now that you mentioned that, you know, there are a couple shots of Michael Rooker reacting to things and, you know, maybe I didn't put two and two together exactly. So maybe there is more subtext. I'm sure there is. Um, well, I mean, talking about like some of the scenes being cut, there's a really big scene where he goes to Johnny Ringo later on after he turned and he's like trying to negotiate something. And they're like, no, we're not here to negotiate. We're just here to fucking kill you. And then that's when they have him pulled behind by that horse. Remember, he's that dead corpse. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually... So I forgot that when I owned this movie, it was um, like a Criterion Collection version of it. So there are scenes that are missing for, from this version that I watched. I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, they took off, took out this monologue and blah, blah, blah. So, Oh, interesting. Yeah. So the longer edition, was that like a director's cut or is it just like extended studio put something together type of thing? Do you know? I think it might be the studio because the director I was eventually going to bring up was like very controversial. Uh, um, a lot of people say that Kurt Russell actually directed a lot of the scenes. Booting uh, Kurt Russell himself, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, I read yeah. that he was claiming that. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it sounds like there was a different direct, like the writer wanted to direct the thing himself. And then um, I think the studio intervened after a couple of weeks because he was way behind schedule. And then they brought in Cosmatos. Um, yeah, that's what it sounded like. But that he was like a jerk. But then, but then it sounded like Kurt Russell was saying he was pretty much like a figurehead. And yeah, Kurt he's the guy the keeping the whole thing going. Most of the directing. Yeah. Um, let's uh, get to the Wyatts. They show up at Tombstone uh, with their wives. A quick little thing about their wives. Uh, only Maddie gets any any kind of arc or drug, whatever. I don't know. Does she have mm. an actual arc? I think no. It's just... it's not, no. If <laughs> she would have gave hill. up the, if she would have gave up, no, she had an. Oh, at the end, remember they're like Maddie died of an overdose right yeah. after stepping out of Tombstone, like right at the border, so like that. <laughs> yeah. You're like Jesus Christ. Well, that was one of the things that bother. I mean, one of the small things that bothered me too was was just the treating of Maddie. She's just this, you know, this typical shrew or whatever, you know, <laughs> um, the the typical female shrew character. But yeah, they didn't. They went. It seems like they went out of their way to make her look terrible. And yeah, so it's okay that he, he ends up with this other woman. Basically. Right, exactly. Yeah. Fact, well, that was celebrating it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so just waiting for them to be dancing. <laughs> at the end. That swell of music <laughs> would just kind of throw you off. Yeah. Well, okay, so that's another little aspect that I appreciated that where it's not like a romance, you know. They they uh, Wyatt and Josie, uh, they just kind of eye fuck each other the whole time. <laughs> you know, they kind of <laughs> long for each other, but they never act on it, which is nice. Like, even when Maddie discovers there's something going on between them, it's just because they're looking at each other. You know, like everyone, everyone knows, you know. Uh, so that was something I forgot where it's like, no, they don't really cheat. I mean, well. That's a whole nother thing. Some people are like, oh, that's emotional cheating, you know? Well, well. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you're right, though. I mean, the, the the subtlety of of the way the two get together, I think, is well handled. And it makes Kurt Russell seem like a thoughtful person, you know? He's just not he's just not being the typical cowboy. He's going and taking whatever woman he wants. Um, that old stereotype. So, yeah, I... I like the way that side of things is handled, although I didn't like the way Maddie was treated. But it, it does seem that, you know, Morgan and Virgil actually seem to genuinely love their respective wives. Yes. And Wyatt just like, oh, I have one too. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but, you, but can you blame him? I mean, come on, it's Maddie. 
actually what what did that mean in the beginning where like where'd you get her and like probably the same place we got ours or something like that <laughs> do you remember that like what did that mean? i do remember that what does that mean did you sure. hear that one it's funny in all my viewings never heard that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like the the fact that the uh, well, I'll just say it. Uh, fucking what's his name? Sam Elliott is great. Every time he opened his fucking mouth and said <laughs> something was so good. And I like the fact that like uh, he says his his wife is like, oh no, he's gonna hang out with me tonight or whatever. And uh, Sam Elliott is like, the maiden name was Sullivan. Is it like what does that mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like like she kind of like gives him a punch, like don't or whatever. <laughs> I like that the movie's filled with like timely, would that be called timely or period talk? Yeah, or, period, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Even though it's like, it, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I'm your Huckleberry. I don't get it, but you feel what it's supposed to be, you know? For sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I I like um, the Herb brothers, um, the way their wives are treated. Yes, yes. It does feel like there are different sides to every relationship and i think that does give things extra depth no doubt um morgan uh oh morgan uh bill paxton i I'm, i've never hated this guy you know he's so goofy and stuff and i think he was so well cast as like the younger brother who he he more idolizes his other brothers but he's not quite ready for what's about yeah. to go down yeah i love bill paxton and um was was happy to see him in this and thought he did a good job. Before the OK Corral happened, I wanted to be like, game over, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk about our introduction to Doc Holliday or Doc Holliday in general, where um, he's interacting with yet another great little actor in Frank Stallone. Frank, I know just from like tiny little bits, you know, he's in movies, usually kind of crappy movies and stuff. Um, but I noticed that the he acts the best when he's in a bar for some reason. Like if you've ever seen Barfly, he's actually pretty decent in it because he's playing the asshole bartender. And uh, again, he's, he's in a bar here. Oh God, there was something else where he had to be in a bar, but it just works for him. So it's like using Frank in like the perfect little spot <laughs> wait a minute uh, wait a minute frank stallone is in this movie yeah yeah that's the guy who's like <laughs> who calls doc holiday a cheater at the very beginning yeah oh right. when we first see doc holiday mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to go find frank stallone in this movie now the Does only he record any music for the the film he was a musician wasn't he yeah. um the only reason I know Frank Stallone is because Norm Macdonald did Frank Stallone commercials or commercials jokes in um, <laughs> SNL Weekend Update. Oh, that's awesome! Um, yeah, that was one of his crutches. He would go back to Frank Stallone and always get a laugh. <laughs> well, yeah, um, it was either that or OJ, but uh, or OJ. Yeah. OJ was the other crutch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so what about Doc Holliday here? He's he's the longer, as people call him. He's got the uh, tuberculosis, right? Mm -hmm. Consumption. So, uh, so, yeah. I right. think uh, Val Kilmer just kind of stole the movie, in my opinion. Like, I just always wanted him to be on the screen with that sweaty-ass face of his. Fucking A. Just see what he's up to. I mean, we've been talking for 20-plus minutes, and this is really the first time we're talking about Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday. And, yes, he does steal the show. I mean, this is his movie. It's just one of those things. And um, without him in that performance, I don't, I don't know. This movie's kind of pretty mediocre because he just brings so much of it to life. He really does. And yes, the sweatiness adds, <laughs> adds texture to everything. It's just, it's so, it feels so real, you know? And I, I know in the parlance of our time, uh, a sweaty performance means something else, but that, that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have literal water dripping off of his face at all times okay so ebert siskel and ebert ebert was like um i knew i had to watch tombstone because everyone would come up to me and say dude uh val kilmer and tombstone watch it and he's like okay 
But then that's what everyone kept on saying, like back in the days. They're like Val Kilmer and shit like that. Um, so he ended up really liking it. But then Siskel was like, he's too close to death the entire time. And I'm like, well, yeah, he dies in the movie. <laughs> he is so sick. You know, I don't know. It was a weird judgment call on Siskel's part. Uh, well, that's, but that's now part he's of... dead too. So <laughs> he's not sweating anymore. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of the great things about it, though, too, is is how close he is to death. It's kind of really, he's kind of a wild card, right? You don't know what to expect out of him exactly. Because if you're so close to death, why not fuck around and do whatever the hell you want, right? I mean, he knows he's going to die. It was whatever year it was. We don't have modern science. We don't have modern medicine going on. Um, he knows he's going to die. And I think that leads leads to a lot yeah, of... Yeah, I mean, they tried the bloodletting. They tried the leeches. Like, they were out of ideas. <laughs> What do you guys think of his uh, gal pal Kate, and perhaps she's enabling him? <laughs> <laughs> perhaps uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of an interesting relationship, though, too, because I didn't quite know what that was all about. They seem really close. Um, she's a huge enabler of him, and I don't. I I think it's just maybe it's. It's hard to tell how long they've been together, I think, unless maybe there's some sort of reference to it. But um, it seems like she's just a lot of fun and they get they get along. And I think he 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 knows he's towards the end of his life. And that's I think that's why they're together. Yeah, I mean, they at the very least, they seem to be on the, the same page about things. Yeah. Robbing casinos or whatever. Well, OK, that's so he is a criminal and and. And from what I can tell, he does cheat in cards. The thing back in the day, apparently, was like, that would get you killed if you accused the other guy of cheating cards. That's brought up a, a couple of times in the movie. So that's fucked up. <laughs> you know, it's like, I am getting fucked over here, but I can't call you on it because you could kill me legally or some shit like that. Yeah, there's like these weird, like, honor things. And like, yeah, if you accuse someone, but you can't, like back it up with proof then you're in the wrong basically <laughs> as the wild west baby i don't know if he ever actually cheats at cards does he ever actually cheat at cards in this movie it, it's it's never it's shown implied. like what was it like you won 12 hands in a row like nobody does that or i, I don't know something like that but okay. yeah i don't i don't think it's explicitly shown no um, okay, so let's move forward a little bit. We gotta, we have, I was gonna introduce all these characters, but no, we'll just kind of shift to, um, can we, can we spend a minute on Billy Bob Thornton? Cause that's pretty early. Oh, yes. That's, yes. that's, so that's, that's fun. I, that's, I, I, I tipped I my, that. my hand to this earlier. I did not know that was Billy Bob when I watched it twice. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, such great. a he's such an asshole. He's such yeah. a bully. I loved the line when I was a kid for some reason. He's like, God damn it, it's like I'm playing with my brother's kids. <laughs> <laughs> that was like such a weird insult, but like I liked it. I don't know. <laughs> it, it told a it told a story. Clearly, this man's an uncle. You know? <laughs> he plays cards with his kids at least. He gets down on the floor and tries to teach them something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But well, and I think just, it's, uh, that that whole scene is our first real introduction into Wyatt Earp, into like his hard ass ways, like the way he can intimidate people. And I think that's maybe what's most powerful about all that stuff. But then Billy Bob plays the foil perfectly. You're gonna stand there and bleed, or whatever the quote is. And and then when they when they're when they're outside of the bar, the casino bar, whatever it is, and then. Billy Bob realizes this is Wyatt Earp that he's talking to and he's holding this shotgun and he's about to shoot this guy. And then he just stands there with that shotgun while the rest of the guys are conversing amongst themselves. Oh, chef's kiss. Great stuff. Yeah. Like as, as intimidating as Wyatt was like, um, he's terrified of Doc Holliday. <laughs> um, I was going to talk briefly about the theater part because that's where, uh, the actors, um, Billy Zane and um, Josie show up um, in the theater. That's when the Cowboys kind of take over all the front seats and stuff. And then they befriend Jason Priestley, 
I don't know if you guys remember that heartthrob from the 90s. Yeah, see, I, I didn't know that was Jason Priestley until I read up a little bit on it afterwards. And that that stuff kind of felt shortchanged too. The whole Billy Zane, Jason Priestley, like that. there's not enough context here for me to feel anything for these people, I guess. In that in that edition that I watched, he does uh, he does have more lines that Billy that Billy uh Pres not Billy Preston, but yeah, Billy Zane. <laughs> the yeah. Uh, combination of those two. <laughs> you were you were great on Let It Be. Uh, oh, okay. So this nice little thing again. It's just another way of showing how weird Ringo is. Where like uh, you know they're watching the Faust performance about how, how you know selling your soul or whatever. And Curly Bill's like, you know what I do? I take that pitchfork, stab him in the ass, or something like that. And he gets a huge <laughs> laugh, and then he kind of leads towards Johnny, and he's like, "What would you do?" And Johnny's like, "I already did it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was and great. Curly's kind of like, "What the fuck?" All right, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the most badass thing you can say at that moment. <laughs> and it was just to Curly Bill. I I like Howard's Booth a lot. Uh, I've never disliked him in anything. I think he's a smooth motherfucker. I think he's cool. Yeah. So I love him in this role. And I love the fact that, spoilers, you know, he's the main leader guy, but he gets killed kind of not halfway through, but kind of halfway through for everyone else, mm -hmm. allowing Johnny Ringo to finally take over and stuff. And that's when you're like, oh, shit, now it's going to get fucked up. So I don't know. I, I, I like that a lot. I've never... Growing up, I was like, I've never heard of the lead villain dying way earlier than the muscle character, you know? Yeah. It's cool. Mm. That's that's a good point. Yeah. I would have to put some thought into that. That that yeah, it is kind of a smooth, smooth decision to do something different like that. Mm -hmm. Unless it's like a fake out and it, you know, oh, it turns out the muscle was actually the brains too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did that happen? What, what? Yeah, didn't they do that in one of the Doctor Strange's. Oh, oh, I never saw it. All Sorry. Right, Moving along. Okay, well, I I got to get to the scene. Okay, uh, it's just because it's one of the great scenes for me. Is they're working at night now. They're they're using they're running the Pharaoh games, right? Uh, the Wyatts, and that's when. Uh, the cowboys show up and Ike's all drunk. He's like, yeah, you, you better not be doing nothing, law dog, and shit like that. And he's like, yeah, you guys win, 500 or whatever. And that's when Curly Bill's like, shut up, Ike. <laughs> like, we just got, you know, they just gave him some, some money. But that's when Johnny Ringo was like, oh, you're, you're Doc Holliday and shit. Are you retired too? <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole, that whole uh, Latin, uh, does anyone speak? Um, Latin? Language. Are you asking Nobody if one of us Latin. does? Yeah, I, I did that... look up what the. I think I have a translation from. Uh, Sweet. Um, in vino veritas, in wine there is truth. Um, I, I, I can't pronounce the Latin. Basically, do what you do. Let Appella the Jew believe, not I. Youth is a teacher of fools. Rest in peace. And it's this, I'm reading off the IMDb trivia page here. <laughs> uh, Let Appella the Jew believe not I was confusing to viewers. Scholarly, scholarly papers showed that the Romans used the phrase to show contempt for Judaism's belief that divine power was involved in everyday life. No shit. So he was definitely not only speaking Latin, but quoting some Roman era talking points i guess something or another yeah the uh yeah he's like evidently johnny ringo's an educated man yeah how many languages that that uh that johnny ringo can spell you know it's it's so interesting it's it makes him so much more weird weirder that he's so intelligent it's like why mm -hmm. are you why are you doing this why are you like that but i think actually they talk about that at the end where like didn't doc holiday say like he wants revenge for being born or something like that, where yeah. like he doesn't even understand himself and shit like that. Ooh, Com cool. complex guy. I think that's kind of a stereotype though. Like, I mean, it's, you got to have your villain be interesting, right? I mean, you turn to your Hannibal Lecters or whatever, you got your, your educated serial killer villain guy. Right. So I think uh, there's something mysterious and it's just kind of the audience just kind of realizing or just accepting the fact that this guy's complicated. He's, he's, 
he's educated. There's more thoughts going around in his brain than are going through my brain. There's that whole, there's that whole aspect of it. And I mean, it's smart, but I think it's a little bit tired. Yeah. I thought so too. I don't even know why I brought it up, but let's get to the part though, where, um, Billy THC is here. Thomas. Aiden yeah. Church. I was going to say, is this where we get our first <laughs> dose of THC? <laughs> And I think we brought we, we we brought him up for uh, George of the Jungle, where he pops up. <laughs> and I mentioned like how he he doesn't do a lot of movies, but when he shows up, it's awesome. Like I I just appreciate it, and I I like the fact that he doesn't do a lot of movies. He's just kind of I imagine he's very free and shit like that, you know. Uh, but he has this great interaction with Doc throughout the movie. Um, just because he's fucking drunk and he's like, what, you know, what does Kate do with that lunger and shit like that? Um, and that's when he's asking about all those piano stuff mm -hmm. and shit like that. It's great. Yeah. Like basically he was having none of that classical music and he wanted to hear some, some modern ragtime and stuff. It seemed like. Cat town races, right? Does the need <laughs> request that? <laughs> yeah, that could have been. <laughs> Something with some tempo, something, something uppity. Do so I just, do I just wanted to say, I was, I was, I was just racking my brain. So THC, where have I not liked him? Um, have you ever seen We Bought a Zoo? No, I do not like him. And We Bought a Zoo. He kind of really? plays Matt Damon's best friend, oh, kind of a womanizer. You don't really like is it him. his brother, actually. But yeah, his brother, pro probably brother. Yeah. Well, I'm like, I mean, it was a poorly written character though, too. Like, I'm sure. You just yeah, like it was like we need someone to say these lines to Matt Damon, and they don't match up with things he said earlier and stuff. But <laughs> they're like, oh, let's just have him do it." You know what wasn't poorly written? The paycheck. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Tombstone. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, but so. That I'm afraid you're going to jump ahead, but that the same scene where they're like speaking in Latin, is that where um, uh, Doc Holliday does the uh, the gun spinning trick with spin. the, the cup? Absolutely. Yes. So clever. I, I, like, I remember that as a kid. I was like, that is great. Like, Diffuse the whole yeah, situation. Yeah, like what other way like could that. you have de-escalated? That was yeah. amazing. <laughs> yep, great. Uh, let's skip a little bit here. I mean, we do have to cover the fact this kind of starts off the, the main tension though, afterwards where Curly Bill's high on opium and he starts shooting at the moon. Love that. Love that. That's <laughs> great stuff. But then, oh my God, that fucking coward, that County, uh, sheriff. He's like, no, this isn't a County matter. It's a town matter. Right. So he sends old ass Harry Carey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> to defuse the situation <laughs> and but it's so messed up because after you know curly bill is like handing him his guns but then he, sh he it's like upside down he's he shoots him in the chest right i love the musical sting and how horrifying it looks because like smoke's coming out of it and it's just like ah and then curly's like oh come on man <laughs> you know we were just funning it's so fucked up that he i'm wondering if curly bill really was like oh shit I just killed Fred, you know, the fucking, the town, uh, whatever his name is, the town yeah. sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 again, I like Powers Booth because there does seem to be some depth to him. I think, I, I think you can kind of see it in his eyes. Like, oh no, I fucked up for like a, maybe just a second there. But, um, yeah, I liked all that stuff. Good. Um, and then I think his best reading, though, is when they're like, you know, after Morgan is killed, and they're like, okay, after this, no, you know, it's over. And then Curly Bill's like, well, bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know they could be such snot asses back in the West. <laughs> um, I really feel like we should skip some more shit here well, um, so what's what's good in the middle of the movie i'm trying to i didn't write i didn't write down a whole lot of notes to this um i i okay so does anybody know this i i wrote down the word no four times in a row no 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 and i don't know what that means <laughs> did, 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 did somebody say no four times in a row and i had to write it down is there a uh, scene where somebody goes no, no a bunch of times okay Shit. forget that Cut it out. 
<laughs> uh, okay, well, let's get to okay. So everything starts to slowly accelerate. The Cowboys and the uh, the Earps keep on clashing. I like the fact that Virgil eventually he doesn't la- want to deny the mayor anymore because the mayor, played by fucking um, uh, the dude from uh, the island, what, not the island. Don't know. Fuck, lost. Uh, Quinn, Terry Quinn, another like stealthy performance stealthy actor do you guys know that guy nope harry o'quinn maybe maybe but he plays the mayor he's the guy who's like it would be great i mean you guys were lawmen could you kind of help us out because this is getting horrible so when virgil does finally crack he's like you know i can't stand it we have to do something so that's where he puts the ordinance of no guns (laughs) in the town (laughs) Ah, yes. Oh, Virgil. No, that'll never work. (laughs) But yeah, talking about the interactions of the mayor, I wrote down a quote from Wyatt earlier where the mayor basically says, like, you know, you you start making this money in this town, eventually you're going to gain a guilty conscience. And he says, I already got a guilty conscience. Might as well have the money, too. Yes, Um, yes. Okay. I I wrote down my favorite quote. I never saw a rich man who didn't end up with a guilty conscience. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Thank you, Um, guys. I wrote down my favorite quote, but I'll talk. That'll come up later. Oh, shit. Foreshadowing. Uh, Okay, so then they will join, or eventually Morgan and Virgil are lawmen. Still, uh, Wyatt doesn't want to do anything. But again, these clashes that they have keep keep happening. So now eventually they're going to, the Cowboys are like, okay, goddammit, we've had enough. Like, it's coming. You're you're gonna have a fight and shit. So now they have to get ready. They're gonna uh, six cowboys show up. Um, Ike is still fucking hungover and shit like that for the night before. Uh, we kind of skipped when um, Val Kilmer was on that thirty six hour uh, binge. Um, but that's just more of the same of like, oh, he's hilarious. Yet he's still drunk and dying and shit like that. Um, but so let's get into the actual shootout at the OK Corral. Do we want yeah. to have the corral discussion? What is a corral? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that where like they keep horses? I think so. I, it's it's gotta be. And then yes. and then you know you 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 pay a little bit of money for them to keep your horse safe or whatever. Although I'm sure whoever's running the corral, you know, if the fucking cowboys come up, you're just gonna get the hell out of there. You're not yes. nobody's protected anything. And this has to be the most historic thing that's ever happened at a corral. <laughs> Gotta be. Gotta yeah. be. Unless you count uh, at the Golden Corral where that fight broke out when they didn't bring out enough steaks for everybody. It's not an actual thing. You just, I think you so. that? Okay. Wisconsin? I think that happened in Wisconsin some months yes. ago, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Love it. Uh, okay, so eventually Doc Holiday does show up. He's like, I'm part of this. You know, even though Earp is like, hey, you know, you should be in bed or whatever. And Doc's like, that's a hell of a thing to say to me. Like, you know, he, he got so mad. He's like, no, we're part. We you know we're fucking family and shit like that. So they're going to go meet the, the cowboys. And this is another thing that I wrote down where the fucking um, Behan that fucking county sheriff, he shows up right before they get around the corner. He's like, oh, it, don't worry, I, I've disarmed them. He said that. Mm-hmm. So I do believe that that dude is in cahoots, as they say. Yeah. He's been bought yeah, he's off, gotta man. Be. He's got to be. Yeah. Gotta yeah. Be. It's, it's just kind of, I just wish there was like one more scene kind of illustrating that, at least, or just some more hints at it or something. It just kind of bothered me the way things turned that way. Yeah. Um, I yeah, they should have like unmasked one of the cowboys. They're like County <laughs> Sheriff Behan. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, meddling kids. <laughs> Those meddling <Like> herbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the actual shootout itself. I, I like this. Um I'm not Yeah, uh, I I really uh, like how it starts where uh Doc Holiday winks at THC and then he just gets like jittery and then like pulls his gun and then all hell breaks loose. And then fucking Ike is like, no, I, I don't, you know, please don't. And they're like, the the fights commence, like join or get away. 
So he rushes into the building behind them and takes the other guy's gun and shoots from there. Now, from what I can tell, over the years, I've looked up Tombstone and shit. I find it kind of interesting. Um, some people say that the movie did Ike dirty because Ike did say, oh, my God, don't shoot me and shit and cowered away. But he never did bust out and start shooting at him. Hmm. He did everything else, but not that part. Yeah. Hollywood taking liberties with facts. Huh. Unprecedented. Oh, God, do I feel diffused. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so th after the shootout, uh, Morgan actually does shoot that one guy in the head, even though he didn't even need to because uh, Doc, you know, he's like, oh, you'd be a daisy if you do. And that's when he shoots the guy up. But then Morgan shoots him in the head. Uh, probably not necessary, but it is now going to fuck up Morgan because he's going to say, like, you know, Wyatt, you're right. Wish I didn't mm -hmm. do it. Shit like that. Um, a nice little shot afterwards is the sh the the shot of the the dead cowboys all done up in the old yeah. style in the yeah the glass coffins or whatever. I was like, that's fucked up, and you could hear the fireworks going off. You see the cowboys with like you know uh, in mourning carrying flowers. They're holding a banner. They were like, we were uh, it was murder or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I I wrote that down. That was a cool like five second scene that I kind of wanted to know more context of what what the heck went into all of that. Is that just a typical thing, or what are the politics of holding up the banner and trying to get the word out about this? Are they trying to get regular people on their side or something? I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of strange and kind of cool. One of the cowboys did say before this ever started. One of the big things was like wearing you know you wearing that badge doesn't make you right or something like that and i kind of agree because before this even hap happened why does like you might as well you know, swear me in or whatever so he becomes like a, a, a what a sheriff two seconds before he does this you know yeah. yeah and then eventually uh they're wearing badges the cowboys later in the movie if you remember that right yeah and then doc holiday he asked for one of the badges and He's the only guy who's like, take this. I'm, you know, I don't like this shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I've had enough of being a hypocrite or, or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so badges really are just thrown everywhere. Every, I think everyone wears a badge, basically. I mean, yeah. do they need those stinking badges? They don't need those stinking <laughs> badges. Um, okay. So, you, you guys want to jump to the night of assassinations where all that shootout's going on? Hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Well, I mean, we kind of skipped over Wyatt's brother dying and the other one um, having his arm shot up. No, that that is the scene. Yeah, that, that's where we're going. Oh, through. that is okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it's so weird. Like the they're, they're cloaked and they got a big shotgun. They go after the women, um, and again, B, uh, Bayhan or whatever the uh, county sheriff. He's the one that tells Josie, he's like, okay, uh, you know, I saw you, everyone saw you and Wyatt making eyes after the OK Corral shot, you know, I could tell something's going on. But then that's when he says, Josie, you got to realize that people show up here all the time. They don't know the real play. So yeah, that is definitely, he's in on it. You know, he probably knows like, yeah, all the Wyatt's going to get to get killed. I will be the law again, you know? Yeah. Um... So, yeah, Virgil getting shot in the arm. Uh, so he gets shot, and then he stumbles back to the bar, all bloodied up, and then his brothers come to his rescue. And then Bill Paxton goes off the deep end at some point there and goes off on his own. And yeah. um, good old Bill over, Paxton, man. wild card, right? Yeah. Okay, so I only noticed this when writing it down because he's like god damn it and he runs off right because he sees his brother with the arm you know so i'm like oh god what is he gonna do but then the next scene is him just playing billiards <laughs> <laughs> I know, that, that was that, so that's kind of where i was leading that was <laughs> that was really odd i don't understand what that's happened. how he that's how he lets off his, his steam <laughs> <laughs> well i i don't see any assassins out here let me go play some pool yeah <laughs> Uh, it's uh, like it's like those rec centers, you know, where the youth need to blow some steam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as, as the youngest Earp brother, 
Maybe he was in the middle of a pool off instead of a dance off. You have a pool off. <laughs> you know, and they didn't age. They didn't, you know, age too much in the Wild West. So maybe that guy, maybe Morgan's like, I don't know, 16 or something like that. <laughs> I'm just so full of angst. <laughs> 16. Um, I thought it was great when um, Sam Elliott is, uh, I guess he's laying on this couch and then his his wife embraces him and I, f I forget the exact line, but he's still got the one good arm to hug her with or whatever. I think that was a great, oh, yeah. um, great encapsulation of the relationship they have. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I'm going to steal that. If that ever happens to me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one arm, you can't use it anymore. Everybody. Heck, I might, I might purposely fuck up one of my arms just so I can use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just watched this movie 127 hours. <laughs> okay, so we kind of covered like um the whole well Morgan does die. Yeah, um, so that that was where I wanted to talk about my favorite line of the movie. So earlier on, you know, like Morgan had like kind of a weird unprompted thing where he was talking about like the afterlife and how you know, people see a light when they die. And then, um, you know, in the scene we were just talking about when he's laying there, he's like, remember what I said about seeing a light when you're dying? It ain't true. I can't see a damn thing. Nah, and then he dies. Jesus. Yeah. That's good Badass. Stuff. Yep. And a good death, too. His fucking eyes are just, like, staring into nothing. Ugh. Oh, but then, but then the fucking dog, remember? Oh, yeah. It's just an Shut added. That dog up. <laughs> it's just an added wrinkle. It just made the movie that scene more real to me because it's like, yeah, get that fucking dog out of here. <laughs> like but nobody does. They're just standing there watching. <laughs> if only they took that dog out, maybe Morgan would have lived. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, that's so a, that's a real tragedy. So let's cut to where it really kind of picks up now um because the whites are like okay we're taking off and that's when curly bill's like all right bye bye felicia you know so they get to the train station and they okay curly bill he's he's like okay ike go over there finish this off throughout the movie ringo is gonna be like okay Ike, go do this i'm like cut ike off he is the worst <laughs> he instantly surrenders at the sign of a gun, you know, he's, he, he gives up here at the train, right? Yeah. And, uh, but then Kurt Russell does God. say so, like, so anyway, so Kurt, so Kurt Russell, Wyatt Earp's brother dies and that sets Wyatt Earp off the deep end. He's going to get his revenge and he shoots one cowboy at the train station or a couple. And then he says, says to another one, go off and warn all the other cowboys or whatever. Is that, is that how it goes down? Maybe. no <laughs> silence could be and because like and like virgil and like the herb women are all like leaving on the train right yeah like right. They're, they're getting out of town and then wyatt stays behind and the stuff you just said happen right and then we have the montage of killing cowboys yeah with reckless abandon oh yeah good stuff lots of blood lots of uh Lots of vengeance from Kurt Russell. Good stuff. Good stuff there. I mean, it's all, it's all kind of that, like, throughout the movie. It's just, like, it's just a series of attacks on more and more cowboys. Like, we, I kind of mentioned Curly Bill. He's going to get, he get killed now, right? So it's just kind of unusual. And that all leads to a scene on a ranch where Doc Holliday is getting pretty sick. And then um, some rancher takes him in and tries to bring him back to health. And then at the same time, Johnny Johnny Ringo somehow word word gets to Kurt Russell that Wyatt Earp that Johnny Ringo wants to talk with him. And then and then um, Wyatt Earp goes off to talk with him. But actually, Doc Holliday gets out of bed magically and decides to go have his final standoff with Johnny Ringo. Um, did, so when you guys watched it, do you guys remember being surprised that Doc Holliday showed up instead? Uh, mm. yeah, I was surprised. For, for a second, and then I realized, yeah, this is how it should be. Yeah. I, I really liked the scene. I don't remember who Doc was talking to. 
but they were asking him like why are you doing all this and he's like Wyatt Earp is all Wyatt Earp is my friend and the other guy says hell I got lots of friends and he's like I don't I don't yeah that was pretty great uh well that whole you know uh Wyatt showing up instead of or Doc showing up instead of Wyatt was actually ruined in the trailer growing up I remember that because it just shows like him like oh you know he's like oh when he shows up that that shot they put in the trailer so even though I was that's, that's oh, why I'm indifferent to trailers <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Famously. Famous, <laughs> much very famously. Um, but yeah, after that, we finally got uh, Johnny Ringo. That that death is cool though. I just gotta say that. Like the shot in the head, and he's like a zombie, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so unusual and again, one of the best roles, and he has a weird death as well. Johnny mm -hmm. Ringo, I salute you. You're an awesome villain. Um, I think I mean we kind of skipped over the the shootout at the river where Powers Booth dies, right? Oh yeah. And, um I mean a really really cool scene. Um there's something mythical about it and something magical. Um yeah, like Kurt they're, Russell they're... just jumps out there and because <laughs> he's pinned in between two groups of cowboys, right? And then he's just like fuck it, and he like gets up and he just you know charges towards the river and comes out yeah i mean that was after yeah that was after his brother died so yeah yeah, yeah yeah so yeah so actually um powers booth doesn't die until towards the end of the movie actually now that i'm yeah i was completely murdered. wrong shame me but so, it does uh, feel like johnny ringo has a whole hell of a lot of sway in that entire movie and then maybe it's all kind of coming to a head towards the end of the movie when he meets up with Doc Holliday, feel, it kind of feels like Johnny Ringo would maybe have a different approach now that Powers Booth is out of the way. Like maybe he would, I don't know, maybe he would do something. But maybe maybe he had something planned for Wyatt Earp. But um, it never came to pass because Doc Holliday got there first. Um, after that, they're like, okay, let's finish this shit up. Uh, you know, killing the rest of the things. And then this is the fucking part where they're chasing down Ike, and once again, instead of getting killed, he takes off the sash, uh, Earp and Doc Holliday shake hands. Would you guys have killed him? Would you have let uh, Ike go? He took off the sash. You have no choice. I, I, I was just kind of surprised by it. I don't know. All right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> So we so we talked about uh, so now uh, Doc's going to be let's talk about that his uh, death scene which John feels should have been the real end right let's talk about that final scene with only moments <laughs> to go yeah um, I don't I don't necessarily think that should have been the final scene I just kind of thought the actual final scene was just like a weird complete shift in tone. Yeah, that's that's my whole thing too. Why was he why was he looking at his feet? Why was Doc Holliday looking at his feet? There's something um in in that culture like you're not supposed to if you die without your boots on it's something. It's a curse or it's something. Oh. oh okay. Yeah. But I think Doc Holliday was like, "Oh, so I'm dying without my boots on." But I don't think he really you know, he just kind of shrugged it off. I don't think Holliday believed in any of that shit. So Okay. But yeah. That was the movie, Tombstone. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment. This is uh, Vince Cloud. I'm Matt Hagen. And I'm John Nemitz. Yourself.